In this video, I want to show you another use case of JBang plus Pi4J uh, to control an 8x8 LED matrix. In my book, I have described this whole system and this whole flow uh, using Pi4J version 1. So it's time for an update and let's look at this example uh, with the new version of Pi4J version 2. Um, I'm just going to use all the same code to uh, get the same result, uh, but just everything condensed into one jbang file and i'm going to show you how to use that um, i have here uh, a raspberry pi which is prepared for you so i started from the raspberry pi operating system but the pi4j version that you can find on the pi4j.com website uh, so that means that java is already installed so what i did uh, after it was uh, burned to an sd card i did an update and installed Visual Studio Code. Uh, that makes it very easy to run JBang code on a Raspberry Pi. Um, what I also did was clone the Pi4J JBang project. So that means that I have all the JBang examples here available now on this system in my home directory. So here are all the files that we uh, have available in the Pi4J JBang project. Uh, what I also did is uh, just check that Java is here. So indeed we have Java pre-installed uh, on this uh, operating system version. If that's not the case, then take a look at SD Kaman, uh, which makes it very easy to install Java versions on a Linux system. Um, and what I also did uh, was install Gbang, of course, because that's the tool we're going to use to start a single file java applications which uh, need dependencies so jbang is installed here uh, with this single uh, line command now if you look at uh, the project that we got from um, from the github repository so these are all the files i'm interested in the pi4j let matrix spi example here and let's see so in visual studio code i also installed two extensions which makes it a lot easier to work with Java code and JBang. So that's the language support for Java by Red Hat, which offers a lot of tools for Java and uh, JBang. Uh, and the main reason to install JBang in Visual Studio Code is that if you go to your file and you right click, then you have this new option here. And if you click on synchronize JBang, it will look into this list of dependency, download them in the project. And from that moment on, uh, you won't have any uh, code errors like here the imports are recognized and the code is all recognized and so on. Now uh, what's inside uh, this project, uh, this one single file? So it's uh, controlling a LED matrix which is actually connected through SPI and the SPI connection uh, is there because um, on that device that I'm using here, that you can see uh, here, I've prepared the setup for you. So uh, you see this, this IC, which is uh, next to the uh, eight by eight uh, matrix, which is actually a controller. So you can send it uh, SPI commands to do something, to show something uh, on the matrix. Um, it's a MAX7219. So that's an IC. Uh, which is there, which actually controls the 8x8 uh, LED matrix. So for the wiring, it's very easy. You see that there are not a lot of wires uh, on this test setup. Now uh, let's look into the code. In the main function, we of course need to configure our SPI connection. So we have here the SPI object. First, we start with creating the auto context. So this um, tells the Pi4J library to load all the dependencies which are included and which we have uh, defined here. So all these dependencies. So we have the Raspberry Pi plugin, we have the Linux FS and the Pi GPIO here in this example. So these are all loaded automatically by Pi4J if we ask for in context. And then we can set up the configuration for, for our SPI device. So we give it an ID, a name, the bus that we are using and some other uh, default values. You see that we can just use uh, all the defaults here. And then we can create our SPI object. So this is actually the SPI connections that we have now uh, towards uh, the device. 
there are some things we need to do before we can send data to show on the display they are all uh, defined in here so we have some commands that we need uh, to send like a test uh, mode that we can set on and off um, that we are going to use all the bytes the brightness and so on and so on so all these are here uh, needed at the beginning of uh, the setup of the project okay and then there are different commands here which will do something show something on the display like all off is uh, put all everything off of course then uh, show one by one a let uh, show all the rows show all the columns a random output images and then some uh, characters now let's go through all this code so to put everything off we have to go through all the rows and give them the value zero so we don't want anything to be uh, highlighted of the leds so on all the rows we put everything off and vice versa if we want to show one by one then we loop through all the rows there are eight rows and loop through all the leds there are eight leds first we put everything off and then we write the value one for the specific uh, let that we uh, want to uh, show on the given row okay and so there are many uh, other examples here like showing all the rows showing all the columns uh, some random output is just putting some random values uh, on each row but maybe it's interesting to go to one of the images because there are also enums here uh, so these are the commands uh, did I go to four? Yes, so here are the characters. So um, this is a way to visualize uh, text on uh, such a display. So we have a space, which is actually just two columns with nothing being lit. Here we are using uh, an integer parser to go to a byte value. <clears throat> and how you can easily find back how these um, what these things mean so if we go to find and we do find one and uh, now you start seeing how this data is constructed like to visualize the character a you see that we have um, zeros and ones and the ones define of course the let which is being turned on and you can recognize here the character a you can also see it a bit here in the small preview so we have a b e and so on and the same goes for the images so scroll down scroll down scroll down so there are also some images here which are defined and you can recognize a heart then a raspberry pi like logo there's a smiley below smiley an arrow and a cross so you can see that you can very easily design something to be visualized on such an 8x8 matrix uh, by using ones and zeros which are converted into byte values which is actually the thing that's needed by this max processor uh, to show on um, the display now uh, running this uh, gbang application is again here specified how you do that I already did it, so I can just go back to my previous command. And now let's uh, start it. Then you will see that uh, if this is the first time, it will build the uh, now download the dependencies and then build the jar. Uh, I've done it before, so the download is not longer needed. It's just building now uh, the jar file, and you see everything has been constructed and initialized, and now it's going through the whole process of running all the examples which are created within the code. Okay, so this is a very short walkthrough the idea is that you actually look into the jbang and the java file 
and follow the process of controlling the matrix and sending images and characters and just random data that you get the idea of how you can control a device like this and the possibilities are endless so you can combine a lot of these little 8x8 matrices and make a chain of them so that you have a longer display uh, or use them for yeah whatever comes into your mind have fun <laughs>